Good evening. Welcome to Street Talk. Um, I'm Dominic Cotton here once again. Uh, Father Father Russ is still out on sabbatical, hoping to join us in in the next couple of months. Um, tonight we have a, a, a very special uh, episode for you, uh, uh, something that uh, I am fully committed to, um, as I've uh, actually uh, been a part of uh, my, my uh, town and city uh, um, as far as solar energy goes, and something that I've had in installed uh, on my house. Um, and I'm looking forward to kind of uh, doing a show uh, that can be universal to, to anybody who's thinking about solar power, power and uh, what the process is that you go through and uh, give you some general ideas about uh, the, the cost and the programs that are out and available. Um, but tonight it was kind of uh, a lot of what's the whole process and what's solar all about and is this something that I want to do and how does it impact us in environmentally. So tonight I have Stefan from uh, from Ross Solar, yeah. uh, which is a, 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 a division of Con Ed, or Con Ed is, is them, Overview. I don't know how yeah. to, how yeah, to like say it. Con Edison Solutions, solutions. yeah. <laughs> so um, he's, he's been kind enough to, to join us. Um, I, I know we're going to have a uh, Solarized Milford uh, program uh, that's uh, going to go up, um, and we'll talk about that later on in the program, about uh, how that helps us all in, in our fair city of Milford. Um, but I wanted to kind of give an, get an overview of, of solar power and what the process is and how this all works and where we all go from within that. So, yeah, hey. Stefan, thank you for coming out today. Of course, today. thank you for having me. Thank you. So, I think the, the, the obvious uh, point that we want to kind of like look at, and I know you face a lot of people in the kitchen table, um, is what are the reasons that people want to go solar? I mean, what are some of the what are some of the benefits that um, people come to the table with, or, may, or maybe some of the benefits that they have questions about? Sure, um, it's funny because I I like to ask people that same question, and it's funny because I feel like everybody thinks that their answer, their reason, is the obvious one, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, well, of course I want to save the planet, I want to go green, you know. Of course I want to save money, you know, um, but. Usually it's a blend of all of the above, you know, like you've had these ongoing costs. Um, you, you see solar going up on your street and around your neighborhood and you think, all right, what's the big deal? I'm going to go ahead and, and, and inquire. And, um, and then it's really just putting the pieces together and making sure that it makes sense for somebody. And I think a lot of people are really surprised to learn how affordable it is. Um, there's a lot of myths out there with solar. So as soon as you kind of, you know, you look under the rock and find out what's underneath there, you realize that, wow, this, this is actually a really well-established technology, and um, it's, it's not a, a risk at all. In fact, it's uh, quite the opposite. It's, a, it's a, a really solid direction in which to head, um, as opposed to living on the volatile future that's ahead of us with, when it comes to energy. Well, I know one of the biggest things that we face here in Connecticut is I think we are the most expensive electrical market uh, in the country, or we're, at least we're, one we're of up, them. We're up there, yeah. <laughs> We're up there. So um, certainly, you know, that's that's a, a bigger part of things that it's cheaper for, for, for other places uh, um, in the United States than it is for up here, up here in the Northeast. Um, I think some of the other factors um, is, this is, is, like you said, it's a technology that's been around. I know uh, my father installed solar power panels on, uh, not for power, it used to be solar heat yeah. uh, for, for our hot water system back in the 1970s. They offer some ungodly incentives during the Jimmy Carter administration in order to do this. I know he, he put these up on, on the White House, mm -hmm. and I know, uh, I know Reagan kind of took them on as soon as he got up there. That's what he goes <laughs> But I think conservation is obviously a big thing for, for, for all of us, um, I mean, un unlike other people uh, who are uh, newly in the, at the federal government right at the moment, uh, I think uh, everybody else kind of looks at this and says, well, yeah, you know, this is carbon neutral. It's, I'm not, I'm not adding to, you know, the water, you know, uh, tables rising uh, on the sea levels. Um, I'm trying to do something, you know, to, to make sure that, uh, you know, that's sustainable. Mm -hmm. Really, I mean, and that's, and, and I think that's hopefully what our country is going to come around to is r the realization that there is a way forward with sustainability. Yeah. And solar is, is one of those pieces that goes into it. 
Now, how long has been like the the photovoltaic and uh, mm -hmm. systems? How long have they uh, been sort of in in production? So, uh, so yeah, I'm glad that you talk about solar thermal and solar hot water and solar heat first too, because solar electric, while the fuel source is the same, right? The sun. Yeah. Uh, what you're doing with those quote unquote solar panels are two different things, right? So yes. uh, you can heat hot water, which is a huge you know energy demand for any household with a family, lots of hot water. Um, but then you also need electricity, ways to pump that water through the house. Mm -hmm. So that's the what the where the solar electric panels come in. Uh, they've actually the solar electric uh, as as an effect, a solar cell has been around since the 1800s, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. uh, Albert Einstein did quite a bit of work on this. But in its modern form, the solar panel, uh, Bell Labs, I think it was 1954, uh, mm -hmm. rolled it out, and no moving parts. Uh, they had a very low wattage at the time. They they worked. It was a proof of concept type of thing, and the first customers weren't homeowners, right? It was the Navy. It was Bell the Bell Phone Company. They needed to set up repeater stations so they can get their phone signals mm -hmm. through the, um, you know, through the deserts, uh, and also anybody who wanted to kind of live out in the woods and not be bothered, right? So you would have uh, small solar electric uh, systems being used back then. And uh, and going to your other point about it being green, th that wasn't about being green at the time. It wasn't about not burning uh, coal or oil. It was about bringing power where it wasn't cost effective for the infrastructure to go. And even to this day, there's a tremendous infrastructure benefit to solar. And that's why so many of the incentives are there. It's not just about being green. It's about uh, reducing the demand on the grid and lowering the cost for other more traditional types of fuel because they're need less often, um, or, or solar can be there during peak demands. And, and, and I think peak demands is, is uh, um, one of the benefits to the utility companies because obviously um, for them, mm -hmm. summertime, yeah. the, 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 the best uh, time, of, time of the year obviously, well not completely best, your fall, fall and your spring are your, are your best That's times true. for solar power. Yeah. Um, but it makes sure that they don't have to buy uh, at a, at a hot, much higher rate, or have to turn on some of these extra um, fuel sources uh, to, to to create electricity mm -hmm. during like the peak demand. Yep. Um, so I know they get a benefit from this too. Um, yep. And they also get uh, benefits from um, um, because I think they're required to buy a certain percentage of uh, renewable energy. If I'm uh, Am I correct yeah. in that? Yeah, so there's a few things going on. Uh, one is it's very, so the, the utility grid doesn't have much or any storage on it really, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a whole legion of technicians out there that are managing you know, what the weather's going to look like, what the historical patterns and human behavior is like, and they're trying their best to get out ahead of it. And I apologize if anybody's in the utility industry and I'm oversimplifying what they do. Nope. But the reality is, is that this is why we get blackouts sometimes and brownouts and power surges because the load on the grid doesn't necessarily correlate with the amount of power being provided to it. So you're right on that uh, those peaker stations are there in the event that the load on the grid goes up to that peak point everybody's running their air conditioners, it's really hot or it's really you know muggy out and everybody's cranking their AC. So these expensive to maintain and operate uh, you know, diesel powered, gas powered peaker stations uh, that are distributed throughout the grid will have to fire up to provide power temporarily. And these are maintained year round to, to be used for a relatively short period of time. So mm -hmm. that was the first uh, benefit that solar brought is that it worked at its best during that same time and it would help to kind of plateau the demand in those really sunny times of day where people generally needed a more AC uh, or big buildings and whatnot. So that's where the incentives really um, came to play because it helped save the utilities money, in fact. So they, they were happy to do it. Uh, but as I like to say, they're, they're, they're happy to a point. <laughs> yeah, right. Happy to a point, certainly. Happy to a point. I know uh, for, for myself, um, my system set up uh, so annually, um, I... I'm kind of what I call break even. So I use as much electricity as my system produces. Mm -hmm. um, I still have a hookup fee yep. to be uh, to, to, to be a part of the utility. Which so, is fair, yeah. Um, so I mean, I, I still spend like ten dollars or, or so uh, a month to be to be hooked up um, to the electricity. Um, obviously, you have to because my system at its peak um, is usually in the afternoon. 
So like about 11 o'clock till about like 5 or 6 o'clock at night is mm -hmm. when I produce the most electricity. And you might not be at home to use it. I'm, I'm usually not. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's usually during the evening um, that I, that I want to be able to utilize this. So um, as I say, there's what I call like a, a give and take. It's a symbiotic relationship. Right. But I know utilities, um, UI, CLMP, um, they're not really energy producers in our state. They're energy transmitters right. in our state. So they make money off of the utility lines or the transmission of power to, to the utility lines. That's mm -hmm. why if you ever take a look at your electric bill, half your bills, it's split up into how much you know you, your, your energy is and the other half is how much the transmission uh, costs are to those. Yep. So me being solar, I'm kind of, and, I, and I'm net neutral, so to speak, I'm kind of taken away from uh, the profits that they make on the transmission line, so to speak. Yes and no. Uh, you're getting a great deal, right? You get mm -hmm. to produce all of your energy and basically use the utility grid as a 100% efficient battery. This is called mm -hmm. net metering. Net metering is, is the legislatively created um, program where your excess energy, so right now, it's, it, you know, I, I don't know what time viewers might be watching this, but you know, as we speak now, it's really beautiful and sunny outside. Your solar array is cranking power out to the utility grid, mm -hmm. and they're selling it to your neighbor at full retail. Yep. So they didn't have to trans, uh, transport it very far. They didn't have to buy it from somebody. All they did was route it to your, to your neighbor and get full retail price for it. So there's obviously a benefit there. Uh, from an environmental standpoint, that's energy that didn't have to get transported from a nuclear power plant 100 miles away or the hydro plant up in Canada. So for every kilowatt hour that you're creating at your house and selling to your neighbor, you're removing two, maybe three kilowatt hours from the energy pool. So it's a tremendous environmental benefit as well. Uh, but the economic, economics, as we said, will change eventually where they can't allow that type of free exchange of energy. Uh, they're going to have to start giving you a prorated value or as we've seen out in California, people have to install batteries and, and keep their own um, electricity in their basement until they come home and use it at that time, and that really changes things. So we're lucky that right now in Connecticut, we still have this, this uh, open net metering, and uh, you wanna get in on that because when we've reached capacity or full saturation, uh, they, just, they just can't keep doing it. So you're right that they're in the business of... Well, I mean, they're, they're, they're in the business of making money. They're in the business, yeah. <laughs> um, so, I, I mean, as I look around, like, uh, I'll go around, like, my, my street, my neighborhood, and I probably got about a good 150 houses, like, mm -hmm. in, in my general uh, subsection of my neighborhood. I look around, there's probably about, like, a uh, good six people that, that have solar power, like, arrays. So, there is that incentive to get in now, because once that's kind of, like you said, once you go above a certain percentage, mm -hmm where they can sell that like to your neighbor. Yep. Um, there might be other things that they have to look at like their transformers and how much load can go on those. Right. So like you said, it's, it's, it's important to get in early. I know um, for me, uh, solar power wasn't uh, a, a quick decision. Um, it, was, uh, it was a very long-term decision in, in, in the way that I um, tried to plan for it. Um, I know uh, just in looking at the way that my house was angled, I mean, just from, like, a, as you say, the natural thermal mm -hmm. of, of, of the sun, I know what times I would get, like, a lot of, like, radiant heat from, for, from my house. Mm -hmm. um, I started off maybe five, six years before that and realized that, okay, well, I had three big, huge trees in my front yard, and I had two incentives to this. So one of them was the solar power one. Yeah. Uh, the other one was, uh, I'm in a hurricane zone. <laughs> sure. Yeah. It's a safety issue. Yeah. It was. It was. It was a safety issue. So it was take down the trees that might be close to you know doing damage to to, to my house. Um, so I mean that was my my, my alternative incentive to this. Um, but I know there are other things that people have to consider um, when they're figuring out how this all works. So. I guess what what does the the position of the sun have to do with uh, with 
the way that your your house is uh, is facing and, and, and other things along yeah. those lines. Yeah, so I um, uh, definitely want to answer that question, but you touched on something else I really quick wanted to address sure, too. Sure, Is that we, a, a common question that we get is, it, it makes no sense. Why would you cut down a, a tree to put up solar panels and go green? How green is that? Um, the, the reality is, is that that one tree came down for safety reasons in your case, but sometimes mm -hmm. it's to open up the sunlight and get sure. that direction. Uh, but when you install a solar array, the amount of carbon offsets creating energy right there where it's needed, in just, I think I did the calculation on my home recently, in just one year alone, it's equivalent to planting over nine acres of trees. Now, wow. yeah. Now imagine, <laughs> now imagine what you can do throughout the uh, solar panel's 25, 30 plus year lifespan. You're talking, in, in my case, uh, the, the numbers that I ran for a recent presentation for Solarize Milford, actually, we'll be, we'll be uh, talking about it there. Uh, it's equivalent to planting 260 acres of trees throughout that one solar array's lifespan. So it's a shame that a couple of trees had to come down and we at, at Ross, you know, we never want to advocate for people to clear a bunch of trees if they don't have to, but um, it's still a net gain uh, at the end of the day for something like that. Uh, okay, but solar panels are directional, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, before we were talking about boating and whatnot, right? So think of it like a sail on a, sail on a ship that if you want to capture, let me use your iPhone here, if you want to capture or whatever this is. Uh, if you want to capture as much wind as possible, you turn that sail into the wind and you're capturing as much energy as possible to push it forward. Solar panels work very much the same way, except that the wind is light. Mm -hmm. So if you have a solar panel that's not looking at the sun, it's looking off somewhere else, it's, it might be humming along doing something, but it's nowhere near its max potential if you were turning it right towards the sunlight. Uh, so when Ross comes out to a house, we want to, or even beforehand, we could look on satellite and get an idea of the orientation of your home. And because we live in the northern hemisphere, the sun is always going to be hanging out in the southern half of our sky. It'll yeah. be higher in the sky during the summer, lower in the winter, but always generally towards the south. So the ideal roof would be facing, you know, the southerly exposure and not so much shade. But because costs of solar panels have come down over time, mm -hmm. now we can broaden that and we don't have to be facing true south anymore. You don't have to be living in a prairie with no shade. We can keep the tree. You know, if it's not a safety issue, keep the tree and we'll design a system that works despite that shade being there. And uh, we call this value engineering. So if you have an eastern facing roof or a western facing roof, uh, it could still work out just fine for you. You can keep the trees, you can catch the sun, you can save the money. Um, but it's a process. We have to, we have to, well, we have know to investigate each house. You you have to uh, when when you when you sit down at the kitchen table. I mean, the first thing you have to do is you have to sit down with somebody in their electric bill. Yeah. And figure out okay, well, how much electricity are you are you using currently? Yep. And are there things that you may want to add in the future? So, like for me, mm -hmm. um, I, I managed to do this beforehand. Um, I got um, high efficiency uh, heat pumps uh, for for the downstairs in my house, so this way I knew when I when I had those uh, put in, I was going to use less of my gas like during the winter time, and I could set the comfort of my my home during uh, summer and winter. Yeah, um, and I kind of I planned for those things ahead of time I wanted to see how they, they, they all worked out because it was more efficient to do it even hooked up to the electrical grid to have those high efficiency heaters. Yeah. Um, but once I went solar, um, that was something um, that I knew already what it kind of cost in order to have those things. Right. But you guys, when you, when you sit down at, um, at the kitchen table, you got the bill and um, you can p be planful for like some of those other things that people might want to add in mm -hmm. uh, to the system in, 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 in the near future. Yeah. In, in calculating uh, how, how much energy. And I know um, when, uh, when the gentleman came uh, to, to, to uh, take a look at my house for, for the install, they actually went up uh, on top of the roof. Yeah. And they took I don't know what the instrument was it's called a soul metric. It means <laughs> yeah. measure the sun, yeah. right? And it, and it, and it measured you know where with the angle of the roof and uh, with the way it was facing. Yeah. And you guys can figure out exactly like how much these systems are going to produce. Sure, we we know where the sun's going to be every mm -hmm. minute of every day of of every year. We've been observing and tracking the sun for millions of years. All we need to know is where the sun is going to be in relation to your roof. That's what we don't know. Right, mm -hmm. so 
uh, yeah, we can look on satellite and we can get a general idea, but we still don't know what the roof's perspective is looking out at the trees. You know, so we can make our best assessment or some kind of estimate up front, but whenever it's safe, uh, I don't want to speak for all solar installers, sure. but you know, Ross, you know, we like to get up onto the roof. If it's a really steep roof, we have these long poles and we'll mm -hmm. send that sole metric up there mm -hmm. and we'll get a picture from the roof's eye view. Right. Say, well, what is the, what is the roof see of the sun's uh, you know, path across, transit across the sky? And with that data and then 30 years of uh, meteorological data, we mm -hmm. can now factor in, well, how often does it rain, snow, the nighttime, obviously. You know, we know how long the days are. And, you know, a 7,000 watt system might produce 8,000 kilowatt hours a year, let's say, approximately for our, for our, you know, a decent average house here in Connecticut. But if you take that same 7,000 watt system and bring it down to Phoenix, Arizona, it might do 10,000 kilowatt hours a year. Same system. Mm -hmm. Just, you know. A, a better orientation for the sun, but they don't have the incentives that we do up here in Connecticut. No, and they're and they're as you said, they're 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 cheaper as far as their electric rates uh, uh, yeah. down down there than they are up here. Um, and obviously, different usages for different times. But I mean, there's all that's all the uh, complex parts. There's a lot of moving parts to go into this. And that's why it's good to work with a regional or local solar installer who knows the incentives mm -hmm. and the characteristics of this area, you know, so n nothing against some national installers, but when you really want to get into what your true options are locally, I think it's important to talk to somebody who's been working for 10 years locally. And so, for example, down in Phoenix, Arizona, a lot of the incentives, there are incentives for, for there were, I don't know if they're still there, but uh, the incentives oftentimes will go to the large energy companies who have miles and miles of land uh, upon which to develop a solar farm. Mm -hmm. And then they sell you that electricity to the homeowner, right? So they can pass through some savings. They can take those incentives and, and graciously lower the bills to, their, to, the, uh, to the homeowners in the area. But we don't have that in Connecticut or in New York, right, or Massachusetts. So uh, a lot of that money and the incentives go right to the homeowners because we're a very population dense area. Mm -hmm. uh, could you imagine somebody trying to get miles of land to build a solar farm? I mean, they, they happen, but they're really difficult to take years to develop. I, I know of uh, probably about two or three uh, that they've recently put up. I mm -hmm. know one they did down in Bridgeport, and yep. basically what they're doing is With the brownfields. Yeah, on, on brown on, on uh, where there used to be a dump, mm -hmm. um, and I know um, they did another one. Um, I think out in uh, somewhere around Waterford. Uh, yeah. type area where, where they've you know they, they've had like large fields like you said that they, they they've been able to uh, turn into solar um, but like you said we're 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 a dense population so rooftops are really the most efficient way to go and um, there's the incentive of you know like you said it's a, it's a savings for um, for for the utility companies and, and transferring mm -hmm. the electricity right there um, and I know, um, like, I, like we were talking about with, uh, with, with the angle and knowing where the angle of the sun is going to be, I guess also, um, solar's also, um, is, is sometimes it's affected by the depth of your roof. So like, it, mm -hmm. I guess there's a perfect angle for, uh, for the sun and then it, it kind of goes off as depending upon which way that the roof is actually facing. Yeah, you know, a flat roof is gonna have a different view of the sun throughout the year than a steep roof, right? right. Because when the sun's lower on the horizon in the winter, that flat roof is gonna have less of a, you know, ideal right. view of it. So, uh, but there's a lot of factors, a lot of moving parts here, right? The shade, mm -hmm. the, the, the orientation as well. So uh, if you're in a field with nothing around, you're facing true south for Connecticut, you want uh, about 35 degree pitch. And we're at 41 degree uh, latitude here. So a lot sure. of people would think, well, that's what we'd want to be at is 41 degrees because the sun's going to go up 15 degrees and down 15 degrees. But in reality, during the winter, the days are shorter. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're, they're cloudy and they're gray and there's snow. So it actually makes more sense from a solar standpoint to rock that back just a little bit and get more summer uh, production. And so that's where you get that 35 degree from. But then again, let's say, let's say you're completely shaded during the winter and the sun dips below your tree line. Mm -hmm. Now suddenly a flat roof looks even better because you're getting more energy during the summer. And thanks to net metering that we were talking about a minute ago, you can just bank all that energy and use it in the winter. 
So it's not just day to day, it's month to month. As, as I like to say, um, uh, when, when we talk about like a virtual like meter, it's not like your meter actually sits there and runs forward <laughs> and, and runs and runs backwards. They, I, I they like used to, yeah. I, I like to call it. Um, it's the same idea as uh, when when they first came out with uh, uh, phone plans. They used to have what they call rollover minutes. Exactly. So my year runs from March to March. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I get my best production uh, from my system on the months of uh, March till probably uh, June, mm -hmm. um, because I know there's uh, one thing when the when the roof gets uh, or the solar panels get hot, they're not as efficient as when they're kind of like a little bit cooler. So those spring yeah. and fall months, I know I get my my best production. I'm about even, so I'm running my air conditionings. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm about even during during the summer months, mm -hmm. and then when it comes to winter time, I have all this energy banked. Yep. And so when I really am using the energy off off of the grid, so to speak, is when, you know, it's a cold winter day and it's snowing and it's minus five degrees and I got the heat pumps cranked up to seventy five and I'm not worried about it. Yeah, and you'll never find a battery that you could charge in May and discharge in no. December, right? You know, once it's full, it's full. You're not gonna be able to keep doing it. That's why net metering is such a big deal. And the other incentives that are so important, uh, there's a thirty percent federal tax credit. Mm -hmm. So that's a tax credit, not a deduction. So for every dollar you spend on solar, you get thirty cents back. Uh, one to, you know, it's direct savings. Uh, and then there's also a state rebate. So they'll pay down roughly, it works out to about 15% or so. So you're talking 45% of the system cost paid back in state and federal incentives. And as we mentioned before, most of those incentives are in place because of the infrastructure benefit that during the summer when you're banking all this energy, that's when the grid is tasked the most. Mm -hmm. And solar is helping the most at that, at that point. So you're helping the infrastructure and the environment at the same time, and with some of the creative financing solutions that, out, that are out there, like that you use for your home, for example, mm -hmm. you're also saving money. Well, like I said, it, 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 it made sense to me because I have a two heat source house, yep. so I, I do have the gas as like a backup to, to, to my electrical uh, sources. Um, I know the, the people that came out and they, they figured out how much energy I was gonna like uh, utilize, they actually did a very good job. Yeah. I ended up at the end of my calendar, solar calendar years, so to speak, um, with a 750 kilowatt hours uh, worth of energy that I produced over what mm -hmm. I what I used. Um, now I know you don't want to go too big on a system where you over, so oversize it beyond your needs needs because yeah. I can tell you I got three cents a kilowatt. An hour <laughs> for what I produced uh, uh, extra over over what I what I utilized. Right. Um, so I got like a whole uh, I think twenty five bucks like uh, yeah. back for 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 the extra that I produced. But the nice part about it is is I had no spikes mm -hmm. in my in my payments for my electricity. My yeah. electricity was the same throughout the year. I didn't have to pay more in the winter time. I didn't have to pay more in the summertime. The whole thing was even. And it, and it, and it's kind of nice when you know what your expectations are, your bills for, yep. for the year. It makes it makes your life a lot easier because you can say, oh, I don't have to worry about a $400 bill like in, in mm -hmm. the summer come and due and you know, I got to make a payment for, you know, my kids like tuition to yeah. school or other it's things. It's a great way lines. to help your budget. Yeah, definitely. So I know I know that that was definitely uh, an incentive for me as well as uh, uh, the financial um, incentive. And I know even from the time that I've had my system, which is just, you know, a couple of years now, um, I know uh, uh, there I, I went through the first Solarize program. Um, I was lucky to get, you know, a lease. There was, you know, all kinds of subsidies because um, it, it helped Connecticut and it helped the industry to be able for people to see solar on people's houses because there's, yeah. not, there's nothing better in, in the advertising world than seeing it up on somebody's roof and going, wow, you know, that doesn't look quite so bad. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I kind of like the design of it. Um, and I think that, that certainly helped like the industry. 
and now we're uh, we're we're at the point where I think um, the whole system is kind of turning the corner, so 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 to speak, and um, I think the price of uh, of, of of the actual uh, solar panels has come has come down. Yeah. Um, and um, I know uh, one of the big incentives uh, for 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 you guys in coming down and doing Solarize is um, you have a large group of people who are already interested. Right. So it's kind of like you 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 don't have to uh, you have to obviously create it. The, the sales part of part of things, but it's not as hard to actually have to wait for consumers to come out. You got the people that are coming in from from our, our town of Milford who are right. seeing this, and they're they're going, well, how about me? Yeah, so you mentioned that the cost of solar panels are coming down a lot, which is very true. Um, when I first started in solar about eight years ago, um, solar arrays were going for nine or ten dollars per watt, and you know, so solar is often priced similar to how you might price carpet, right? You right. buy the square foot, but the ours is uh, you know by the by the watt, and so back then, eight, nine, ten dollars a watt. Uh, so you're talking. <laughs> You're talking ninety thousand dollars for a ten kW system. It was, it was astronomical, right? Uh, but the incentives were very generous, but they they were coming out in small batches, so it was really hard to get solar at that time. Uh, now, through Solarize Milford and programs like that, where not only is the cost of the equipment coming down, yeah. but also the installers can be more efficient with our time and make sure that you know if if an installation crew is working on a Tuesday and they wrap up. A project at one o'clock in the afternoon, they can just go right down the street and help the other crew finish up their job a day early. Mm -hmm. And we count on that savings on the way into a solarized campaign, and we pass that through to all the residents in the town. Um, so from nine, ten dollars per watt eight years ago with material and less efficient sure. installation practices, down to the low three dollar per watt range, you know, three forty somewhere in there, uh, we can actually get below. Three dollars per watt on a lot of projects as well, so the cost has come down tremendously in a very short period of time. Similarly, the incentives go away, right? When every mm -hmm. time the cost of the equipment goes down, uh, the state doesn't have to give you as much of a reason to do it. Similarly, every time the cost of electricity goes up, they don't have to give you as because the the savings are more of a justification in their own. And now what we're seeing is is that solarized programs have really done their job to help you know installers become more efficient with their time and now financing is the next uh, the big innovation in solar a lot of people ask isn't the sol isn't the equipment just going to be obsolete next year and the answer is no as we said at the beginning it's been around for 60 plus years it's it, yeah it gets incrementally better but nothing you know nothing major is going to come through um, now it's ways that you can finance. So the lease program that came about, that was an mm -hmm. innovation. Mm -hmm. You were able to have the system installed for no cost. Mm -hmm. You have a fixed monthly payment, and but all of the electrical savings are yours. And um, I don't know the exact economics of it, but I'm sure that made sense. Uh, it's something you're breaking even, maybe saving a little bit of money. Uh, so it makes it a, a no-brainer at that point. You can go green and control your, you control your energy spending for the next decade, several decades. Well, now you talk about like the systems, and I and, and I'm sure people um, don't understand how long these systems actually last. Right. Your 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 solar panels. Mm -hmm. How long are they are they projected uh, to, to 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 last? Well, just like any piece of equipment, computers, cars, sure. solar panels, they vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. So one of the biggest you know, most, well, not biggest, but most common mistakes that we run into these days is people just assuming that all solar panels are the same. Mm -hmm. yeah, they're not. You know, just like when you get a, a new roof for your home, it's important to know, like, well, what brand is it? What's the warranty on it? Things like that. So the simple answer to your question is 25 to 40 years. So it's a long time. You know, even on some of the more, uh, you know, the, the, the less fancy panels that are out there, you're still going to get 25 years easy out of those panels with minimal degradation. Uh, some of the higher end stuff could it rated for 40 plus years. For example, SunPower, SunPower's been around for over 30 years already. A lot of people are surprised to learn that a solar panel manufacturer has been at it for that long, mm -hmm. um, and their products are rated for 40 years, with very generous 25-year warranties to go with it. No moving parts, no maintenance. Um, there are a few other components to this system, though. You have the solar panels on the roof, uh, but then uh, there's racking under that. How long is that going to last? Uh, how is that flashed? Why isn't my roof going to leak? Um, what color is it? 
because you can get the nice black panels but if you put them on a silver rail. So these are the types of questions and the technology that, that, that are important for anybody looking to go solar, look into. Just spend a little bit of time uh, on it and don't just assume that they're all going to be created the same. Well, I know one of, one of the things that they were saying or, or earlier on, I remember um, talking about this, um, was uh, making sure you, that your roof wasn't like a, a double roof mm -hmm. so that if you needed to, to, to re-roof at a, at, at a later point in time. Um, I guess even with the way that mine's like set up because the solar panels are not, are, are covering over and, and mm -hmm. the roof underneath it, um, isn't doesn't have the sun exposure right that, that, that it used to that that, that my uh, my roof's probably going to last a, a little bit longer because yeah. of that yeah um, but if I did have to re-roof can they pull the panels yep. up and just leave like the uh, you know uh, all the all the uh, the hardware in place they'd probably take the hardware out um, so let's say if you were just throwing another layer on Right. You can work with you can work with the roofer on that, but I suppose it'd be easier just to take those footings out. Um, as another testament to our industry growing, not only are we getting more efficient with our installation of brand new solar arrays, but also sure. with the repair or the, you know, the, the relocation of existing systems. So if you want to add an addition to your house, if you want to if you want to re-roof, we can have that whole system down, including the footings. You know, you said you have I think a seven or eight kW system. They can have that down before lunch, whole thing. The roofer can do his do his thing. We come back the next day, maybe a day, day and a half, put that system back up onto the roof. And the cost is really just going to be directly related to just man hour, just labor charges. That's it. So I know uh, for some of my neighbors, uh, actually my neighbor across the street, and I'll speak to him directly, <laughs> who was worried about who was worried about uh, uh, um, having uh, to pull the system off. Um, and if he if he decided to uh, you know do do an upgrade and, and put a dormer on the back of the house, so then that's not like a big to do that most people would think. A lot of is. people think that the savings on going solar are so slim that if anything goes wrong, your savings are out the window, and that's just it's a myth. And I think one of the things that's really going to be helpful for people is to look at the numbers on a page, and we actually show people on a cash flow, we make something up. Mm -hmm. we, we, we'll put right onto the cash flow a what if. Say 25 years is a long time. Things happen. Right. Right? Um, there's a component to the system called an inverter. Mm -hmm. you know, those have a standard 12-year warranty, but you might be thinking 25 years down the road. So you might have to replace it at some point. You might not because they're actually rated to last much longer. Um, but let's say you have to replace that. That can be $1,500. You know, if you need to take the system down and put it back up again, Again, maybe fifteen hundred bucks. You know, if it's a, if it's a complicated install, two days of work, a bunch of guys. So there's uh, there are costs down the road, but when that system is saving you thousands of dollars per year, mm -hmm. suddenly that little bit of incidental maintenance cost, if it happens at all, um, let's put it this way: if your inverter stopped working at year eighteen you would get that repaired so fast. It's like having your water break in your house, right? Like you're not, you're, you're not gonna wanna live in your house without running water. You're not gonna wanna live in your house and have to pay the electric bill after well, the, 18 well, the, years um, of no bill. The infrastructure's all there. And, and, and the infrastructure, and obviously mm -hmm. you have to have licensed electricians sure. and everybody uh, putting all that, those things in. Yep. So I'm sure it's probably you know, pretty simple when they have to change an inverter, because yep. I know mine's on the outside of the house probably a plug-and-play system. It really is. Yeah, I mean, most of the work is getting the power from the roof down to the inverter, which, so let's, we can talk about the components of the system really quick. You have the solar panels on the roof. They're mounted to the roof. You can put on the ground, too. You might have seen mm -hmm. some freestanding solar arrays. Uh, but then we go in conduit, uh, maybe to your basement or garage, wherever your service panel is, and we go to a component called the inverter. Mm -hmm. Solar panels make DC power, direct current. Uh, however, your house runs on AC, alternating current. So we have to invert that energy using a central component, which is kind of the brain of the whole mm -hmm. system. Uh, but then once it comes out of the inverter, it goes right to your service panel. That's it. Yep. So those three major components, panels, racking, inverter, uh, no scheduled maintenance. So yes, uh, back to your, your, your question about service. If that inverter needed to be replaced, and let's just say you get 18 years out of it. Mm -hmm. You pop out the old one, you pop in a new one, those solar panels are good to go for easily another 18 years. You've just reset, you push the reset button on the life of your solar array with a very minimal amount of, of upkeep. Well, I know 
And, and, and I guess here's one of the hidden gems that I, I, I guess some people don't think about. You know, um, I, I, I know uh, we were talking about it with a friend of mine who's, who's a little bit older and thinking about like solar and thinking, well, you know, uh, maybe I won't last through like the whole system. <laughs> um, what happens to my house like afterwards? Well, here's the reality. You have a house that has solar power on it. Yeah. You've added to the value of your house sure. because now the people that are moving in aren't paying for energy. Yeah. yeah. And so that 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 it's it's an appreciation in, in the value of your house. And I believe, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, somewhere in the back of my head I have that um, they don't charge extra for that appreciation like uh, as far as uh, uh, when you go to sell a house. I think there's some sort of uh, weird Connecticut incentive. Well, there's a few things going on. One, when you, when you go solar, first off, all of the savings you're getting are tax-free, right? Yep. Nobody's writing you a check that comes with a 1099 form or, you know, no. W-9, you know, W-9 form. So you don't have to pay taxes on that So because it's just savings, money you didn't spend. Uh, the next is it will add to the value of your home, and there's a whole another discussion about property values and solar. Uh, but it, 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 the data suggests that it's a net positive and it's getting better. Uh, but it doesn't, so it's adding value to your home, but it doesn't add taxable value to your home. This might be what you're referring to. Yes, is the, that's what it there's is. a moratorium on adding property tax mm -hmm. um, costs to a home that has solar. So it'll be more sellable. It'll be more attractive to home buyers who are energy conscious and paying attention to what they're going to have to spend on electricity, and that that makes them be more drawn to your house. Now you have to make sure, just because your house is less uh, expensive to operate, you want to make sure you didn't do something to its curb appeal either. Right. Right. That's no. a, that's a big deal for 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 me in the industry and at Ross, where most of our work is done on referral. Um, it's important that the solar array not take anything away or maybe even complement that home from a design standpoint. And then it, and then and only then does it really truly add value because it's only a benefit in, in reducing what it's going to cost you to own that home. I know um, the way that my system's set up. Um, I think uh, I have, a, I have a, a cape that's stormed, so I have a flat roof in the back. So I have eight panels um, in the back because they couldn't size the whole thing to the very front to the very front of it because mm -hmm. they had I had a couple of skylights on on the front sure um, so um, one of the big components was uh, the design and we had to take a look to you know to make sure it kind of like looked yeah and fit in with like the character um, I'm very happy with it so now I mean I don't I, I you know I like the way that it looks on my roof uh, yeah. I, I like the fact that you know uh, one of the other things uh, that's nice about the panels is the snow just slides right off of them. <laughs> which, which is a blessing and a curse. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I mean, the way my system was designed, you know, it looks good. But that's, that's um, the important part about, you know, when you're going through and you're researching this and, and, and you're figuring out, you guys have to go through uh, a long process. Number one, um, you, you have to, and this is a nice part about Solarize, is the city's supporting you. So going through um, and working with um, uh, the people that have to come out and inspect this stuff, yeah, you guys got a good relationship with these people because you're you're not just some yeah. you know regular run of the mill you know uh, company coming in. Well, that's a big part of Solarize is that it's actually done through an RFP, a request for proposals, where mm -hmm. a committee in the city, in this case Milford. And other cities, other cities and towns will do this too, so everybody should check to see if their town is participating or will be soon, because it's a great opportunity to investigate solar. Um, but in our case, yeah, like we have to understand and know what Milford is expecting to see, because mm -hmm. every municipality has some of their own special requests for how a solar array should be installed, and we want to make sure that we meet those expectations. Uh, the utility as well. Mm -hmm. So in Milford, uh, you know, UI territory, we want to make sure that uh, that we're preparing the drawings in a way that that that's effective for them and efficient, so that they can do their approvals quickly. Um, but also structural engineering, we make sure that it, that your roof can handle the loads. And then you were mentioning snow as well. So part of that process is identifying whether or not you know quickly sliding snow could be a hazard. Sure. Yeah, I mean I, I've seen it. You know, you can get 10 inches of snow on your solar panels, and the next morning the sun comes out. It's a beautiful day that snow slides off and you have a little deck chair out there, flattened. 
right? <laughs> you know, hey, I, I'd say the good and the bad. I'll I'd rather be here. on that deck chair than the deck chair of the Titanic. Yeah, so exactly. You can, pick, you, you can pick your poison on that one. So, yeah, we have to recommend <laughs> to people, hey, this roof area right here, you know, you've got a door here. You want to make sure that there's no little ones running out to play in the snow until that until that slide has happened. And that's that's that personal touch that we want to make sure that we give. And those are the kind of things that a Solarize committee is looking for. You know, are you really going to be providing a benefit to mm -hmm. our, our residents here? Or are you just going to slap up solar array, skip town? And you know, just like any contractor, you know, you had the good ones and the not so good ones. So you want to make sure that they're vetted, they're insured, they're experienced. And that's what Solarize brings is that that person coming through the door, you know they've been checked out. Our right. financials have been disclosed and reviewed by, you know, you know, by people who can, you know, uh, evaluate the pros and cons of, of such things. And so we were the, the chosen contractor for the city of Milford. And just like uh, the, the longevity we're talking about with the equipment, uh, the panels themselves, I mean, these things are, are you know, I'm so obviously they're probably, because I know Milford's in a hurricane zone, mm -hmm. they have to be secured yep. to, to, to a certain uh, uh, level to, to be able to deal with hurricane-like winds. Um, I know, um, I'm sure down in other places that actually face this, that have solar on them, um, they have to be uh, hail-proof. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and so these things are, they're durable. Oh, the, oh heck yeah. Um, solar panels were, as we said at the opening, solar panels were originally designed to go where the grid couldn't go or didn't right. exist. You know, and people have to you know, survive off of that. Uh, research stations in Antarctica, solar-powered. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's their life at stake. It works. Uh, it's been proven. What what feels new is bolting it to our roofs to offset our ever-increasing electric bills. You know, so the technology has been proven. It works. Things can happen, though. If you get six-inch hail, like, you know, at my mom's house out in Oklahoma, I've heard stories of that. You, that can happen. But uh, not much is really going to survive against that. But your typical hail, windstorms, it's all rated for that, and the prevailing code is what we designed to. Now, I know we, we, we touched on this uh, a, a little bit, um, but obviously um, financing yeah. um, is a, a, a big deal with this. And I know um, you talking about some, some of the uh, creative ways. Yeah. I, and I know I listened to, to part of the Solarize uh, presentation in which they were talking about uh, some of the newer um, incentives. Um, essentially, people um, did a certain percentage uh, off of their federal taxes uh, for uh, installing solar mm -hmm. uh, if you, when you're when you're purchasing the, purchasing the system, um, and I know people might be thinking, well, you know, I'm just paying my taxes now. Um, am I going to have to come up with money up front? I guess is there some way that um, you guys have? Uh, I, I believe it's some sort of like financing or something mm -hmm. until like you get paid people get paid back for the federal credits? Yeah, yeah. So uh, there's a lot of innovative financing coming around. So let's back up a little bit here. Sure. Let's go back about five years ago, maybe, you know, and, and longer. The only way to really finance something was maybe to take out a home equity line of credit, mm -hmm. right? So which means you have to have home equity. Yep. If you didn't have home equity, which, you know, back in 09 and 2010, everybody was losing value in their homes. There was no home equity out there. It was really hard to come by. So if you didn't have that, you had to use cash. So if you had to use cash, it needed to have a strong rate of return, and, and, that's, and that was the customer back then. People sure. who had cash sitting around, wasn't doing anything, um, they felt that solar would be a good investment. So they could just buy it. You could still do that today. Mm -hmm. And it provides a really strong rate of return, 10% rate of return, tax-free. Uh, so any investor would, would jump at that, and it would just do that for year after year. And then every time electric rates go up, that rate of return just went up too. Mm -hmm. So it... it, it performs as a fantastic investment. But not everybody is set up to do that, right? And because the financing comes about, it's kind of like a car loan, right? Mm -hmm. You're not going to get that car loan if you don't buy a car, right? The money is made available because the asset is something that you wanted to get. You don't have to leverage your house in order to buy your car. Uh, banks for the longest time didn't recognize solar as something that was lendable because they didn't understand it yet. Mm -hmm. So the the lenders that came about were solar homeowners, people who went solar, and they realized they had to borrow from their daughter's college fund in order to mm -hmm. finance it because it was earning a couple of percent interest there, but the solar returns would be 10, 11% rate of return. And um, so, so 
So people like at SunGage Financial, you know, for example, this is the story I'm referring to, and Sarah Ross down there, she actually pulled money out of her daughter's uh, college fund to finance her solar, and then she lent, it, she lent more to other people to do it. And she started a company which now serves, I don't know how many states they're in now, but uh, they're based in Boston, they have a huge outfit. And this is our go-to financing solution for, for our customers now. It doesn't require home equity. Mm -hmm. It does not require uh, any down payment at all. No prepayment penalties. So you, if you decide you ever want to pay it off, you can. Mm -hmm. um, and what the, the question that you were kind of getting at there is, you're going to get 30% of that investment back next year as your tax credit. Mm -hmm. So the loan is structured in such a way where they're expecting you to make a payment equal to 30% in 15 months. So you get your system installed, you're making a payment based on the post-rebate, post-tax credit amount, which keeps your payments nice and low, and no interest is, accru is accruing for, for 15 months on that tax credit amount. And what this does is it keeps your loan payment really low so mm -hmm. that your energy savings could basically pay your, your solar loan payment for you. And it makes it incredibly affordable. Um, and what we found is if you can go out to year 20, you can go to a 20-year loan if you want, be very cash positive. Uh, year 15, maybe breaking even. Uh, year 10, you're putting a couple of bucks a month into the system, but you're going to get out of it sooner. Or even year 5, where you're putting maybe $100 a month into it, but you're done really quickly. And all of these have their benefits, um, and, and we provide that full suite of options. And there's, there's other loans out there as well. But the main takeaway should be, that it doesn't need your home uh, home equity, no prepayment penalties, no closing costs. It's uh, it's a solar specific loan. That's pretty nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's very nice. And it, what it what it effectively did for raw solar uh, a few years ago is it basically doubled our business because suddenly everybody out there who had an energy bill and could afford their electric payment but wanted to do something about it but they didn't have you know extra cash lying around to buy the solar suddenly they had an option and they can just redirect their their monthly uh, funds to a loan payment instead of an electric bill. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, and, and I think uh, I think the biggest takeaway that I get, I get from this uh, right at the moment is, um, you know, when people are looking at this as, a, as an overall, I mean, you, you, you get you get to feel good about what you're, you're, you're doing yeah. uh, for, you know, not just for yourself, your family, for your community, but there's, because of the cost, price-wise coming down so much and because of the creative ways that uh, your industry has really come about, mm -hmm. it, it makes it sense. Yep. And, it's, and, and, and for, for all those out there that, uh, I know there's some people who like to say, well, you're picking winners and losers when you're offering incentives. Well, no, I think it makes the point that, you know, when we make an investment to get people to understand how well this can work, and and then it gets up to that level where um, there's enough consumer buy-in that it really helps in bringing down like that overall cost, and then more people want to come in and do it. And renewable energy now employs right. more people than gas and coal combined. So yes, there are incentives that helped us get to where we are, but it worked, and uh, they're going away. They're, it's a phase-out program, and it's on. It's always been on our industry to innovate and get our costs down to a point so that we don't need those, subs those subsidies in perpetuity. And they won't be. And, and that's our end game is to get down to uh, grid parity where we can deliver energy from solar. And we're really close if we're not there already. We can deliver green energy at the same price or cheaper than some of the more traditional ways of providing energy. Now, I know we only have like five minutes, so I wanted to hit on some, some, some of the uh, outside uh, pieces. I know. Um, most people tr think of, okay, when um, we lose power yep. on the system, um, that um, your solar array um, actually has a safety system in it. Yeah. Where it, it, it gets a little signal that the, the, the power is still going through the lines, and if that power stops because, like, the electricity grid's out, yep. it actually shuts down sending power back into the system because it, it would energize the lines and it mm -hmm. would be dangerous for, for the utility crews. Yep. But you can have, I know on, on my system, I, I have like a, one outlet yep. which can run directly off, off of the panels. So if I wanted to hook up like my refrigerator or whatever to yep. keep things going, 
um, that 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 is an option. But I know uh, some people think, oh, the power goes out and I'm gonna like you know be able to run like a free for all with no, all the yeah. electricity. So there so there there are some safety systems. Now I know things are coming around quick with this, but like batteries, um, I know as as an innovation to the industry. I know we probably only got one minute here, so actually, you know what, I'm going to skip the battery part. They're coming. Uh, They're coming. They, so anybody who wants more information on that can certainly contact us. It's, it's definitely coming. And we want to give people the contact information for, for, for Ross Solar because you were so gracious to come out here. Yeah, of course. Um, do you have a telephone number? or? or, or yeah, yeah, we're the website, rosssolar.com. Uh, the phone number is 203-512-4500. And uh, turnkey installation, um, wholly owned by Con Edison Solutions, a part of Con Ed Inc., which has been around for 200 years. You can count on us. Uh, we're a proven entity uh, to deliver the project um, to a high level of, of workmanship and, and quality. Reputation, obviously, you guys yeah. live on that. Ten years now. Yep. Uh, people have to, you know, people go by and they're going to see your systems and they're going to see the systems being put up in Milford. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to this. I oh, know me I'm too. going to be out there as a solar ambassador for you guys. So we certainly look forward thank to this. Thank you so much for, for having me and here thank today. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. I think we're good to go run the street.